We're back. Hey, everybody. It's your girl, Lauren Reed, right here. What a Ice Radio. It's the Lauren Reed Live Show. Jay, the gentleman's in the building. What's up? Whoa. It's been a while. It's been really long. <laughs> We're really sorry, everybody. We had a little hiatus, but we were we were working. Right. It wasn't like we weren't doing anything. Yeah. We actually were doing work. Yeah. And that had just to come first. A couple travels. Some yeah. Trips, some trips. Some events. Some events. So real quick, shout out to you. Stone in the City, Volume 2. Good two, stuff. Two. Those is shout done. Shout out to everybody that performed and to the chill spot. Yeah. So um, we had the amazing opportunity to team up with the chill spot. Mm-hmm. Dope show YouTube series. You guys should check it out with Deisha Ali and DJ Malk G's. Mm-hmm. Um, and we collabed together and we came up with this crazy lineup of people who yeah. were on the second um, lineup. So first, give a quick shout out because it's her birthday. Yeah. Come on. Don't you too slow. All right. <laughs> Miss Cree Native, Linnea was on the stage and she like, Blew everybody away. Yeah. She was She's first. She's sick and up. tired. I mean, it's just, 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 just go sick and tired. Sick and tired. Sick and and tired. just moving in the fast and furious yes. way, right? Let's see how <laughs> she we did, a great did that. Job, but it is her birthday. But so it is her birthday. birthday. She came into work today, so we got. So we gotta give her a shout out for that. She got that young people energy to. She go does. Out before and then come to work. We don't. After a brunch as well. Yeah, so when she, you're 24, you can do shit like that. <laughs> not, at that. 35. not at 35. It doesn't work out. So enjoy it now. Yeah, because <laughs> it's completely falling from here on Fall out. downhill. Yes. Um, then we had Deanna Richmond, yes. who had graced the stage, who has a beautiful voice. Then we had a uh, twin. twin. And then we had Che Sav. Sav. <laughs> 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 what is it again? Che Sav. <laughs> All right, we had him. He's um, from Jersey. He yep. was on the board. Um, Project 215. Project 215, which was a full circle moment yeah. for us. Yeah. Because Project 215 was like one of a really early guests on the Lauren Every Live stage. Too. They had a totally different name. Yeah. And they were like underage. I feel like they were 12. <laughs> so they were. Two years ago, so they're on stage now talking about sex. And I'm like, yeah, I got to leave the room. Like, but it's. <laughs> What was it? Body rolls and the body roll gyrations and sexaholic and stuff. Okay. And I was like, Dude, yeah, I can't do this. <laughs> I'm going to leave out. But it was cute. Yeah. <laughs> they came um, a long way, so good for them. Then yeah, they did um, Chase. Oh, oh, oh. Last but surely yeah. not least, we had Miss Frenchie mm-hmm. um, headline it. And Frenchie always brings the energy. So yeah. I don't expect anything less than that. Right. But she completely tore the house down. Mm-hmm. She did every one of the songs that I wanted to see her perform. Yeah, it, was, it was dope. She had dancers. Dancers. Didn't know she was going to come out to a classic Brandy song right. doing the cover. I was just like, okay. Yeah. You really, you showing She's out really tonight. Trying, yeah, like, yeah, you, yeah. you, okay, I see what we're doing here. Yeah, shout out to so her. shout out to Frenchie. Um, it was just a great night. So thank you, everyone, that is um, supporting the Soul in the City movement. We will be back in 2020. Early next, uh, 20, very 20. early next year. Um, and who knows? This person that we're interviewing today, she may grace the stage. Oh, no, we don't, we don't know yet, right? <laughs> so let's get right into it, guys. Let's do it. Um, we have a beautiful artist here on the stage. She is not new to this. No. She's been she's doing true to this. She's hey. true to this. She's been doing this for a while, right? Um, she's from Philly, of course. And she does a little bit of everything. She raps, she sings, she got some poetry going on okay. too as well. So, mm-hmm. snap the fingers, <laughs> yes. everybody. Yes. So we're happy to have her in the building. Everyone, please, without further ado, Miss Noelle Scales is here. Everybody. Hello. Clap it hello. Up, clap it. Come on, come on up. You don't have to be scared. We don't. <laughs> we promise we don't bite, right? Yeah. Not, not, not now. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Second half of the show, baby. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. How you feeling though? Good, 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 good. Where's you? Uh, you were just in Brooklyn? Yeah, last night. Wow. Um, at Soul in the Horn. Soul on the Horn. Okay. Um, in Brooklyn at Grand Torino, and it nice. was really cool. Yeah, that was cool. Uh huh. That was hosted by uh, Rock Wilder and wow. Natasha Diggs. Yeah, Ooh. and um, Alicia, producer of DJ Alicia. All right, yeah, let me get her um, now because. <laughs> <laughs> right, it was right, amazing. Right, right, right. Bye, next year. Next year, she's like, like, who are y'all? Who go, go. <laughs> <laughs> no. Understandably so. It's cool. I'm kind of sort of doing like BET tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so how was the New York crowd? How was the Brooklyn crowd? Oh, wow. They're like 
party people. They're like yeah. fun. Like as soon as we got in there, people was just like letting loose and just dancing, and it was just yeah. like a completely different vibe. It's from always here. a good vibe in Brooklyn, yes. especially in Brooklyn too. Yes, like you Free. said, they don't sleep. Yeah, yeah, hey. and they're just like open to anything. I'm like, pretty sure half of Brooklyn nobody has a job. Like they just yo, you mm. wildin'. <laughs> like they, but like they have the means to do stuff. You right, know what I mean? I don't but know, and they can go out and yeah, figure right. it out. How are you going to the park at twelve? noon like your, <laughs> i know it's weird, it's weird, but. that's the cool part that's why i can't live there <laughs> but yeah it was really really cool um everybody was like super welcoming and fun and the and the crowd was like really receptive to yeah. what i was bringing because i do like hip-hop and r&b i guess you could yeah. say so it's like when you walk in it's like jazz and soul and like disco oh, cool. so different I, genres mm-hmm. all in the same place exactly so i, I was that. like eh, i don't know if they're gonna feel me but they really felt me it was great i feel like we when we have art we always talk about this when we yeah. have our artists from philly or jersey whatever the philly area mm-hmm. when they do perform in other places or even like places like new york brooklyn they're always highly re- like receptive like mm-hmm. they're just like oh you're from philly you know you're gonna be dope like it's kind of right. like did, did, did you feel like that um I think when they said Philly, all the way from Philly, they was like, oh, okay. Philly. So I feel like, yeah, okay. m- maybe in a way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Well, let's, you know, rewind, bring it back a little bit. Let's talk a little mm-hmm. bit about you and how you started. Okay. So um, from Philly, of mm-hmm. course, right? What part of Philly are you from? I'm originally from South Philly, but then I moved uptown. <laughs> <laughs> then I moved uptown. Uh, uptown in the building. Okay, yeah. okay. okay. That. That's, now, you're, now you're speaking her language. Yeah, I'm speaking my language. That's good. <laughs> so, um, did you start out singing, or did it just, or did it come to that from all the other different things that you do? Um, my mother always kept me in some sort of play, mm. okay, or some sort of church production, or some sort of uh, performance theater or something. So I would say I started singing first. And then I started doing poetry, and then the writing kind of evolved, and the music kind of evolved. But mm-hmm. my mom always kept me in music schools. Like I went to Gamp for high school, and nice, you mm-hmm. know. So yeah, yeah, kept it's, you kept you moving. Yeah. So is yeah. it in the family? Does your mom sing, or does it? No. Oh my God, no. <laughs> She you know tries to like do little songs and stuff and tries to little say runs and yes, <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that to her. Don't do that to her. I know. <laughs> she would kill yet. me. She's projecting all it to you now. Like, I know, you're, like, right? you're gonna sing. You better <laughs> sing. Yes. And that's exactly what she says. You better sing. Literally. Mm. Um my dad does not sing, but they love music. Yeah. Like okay. they're music heads. Like they go to concerts. Like that's me. They yeah, they go to more music festivals than I do. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. dope. That's, so I'm gonna be that parent where like I can't sing a lick. Right. Right. But know everything about music. <laughs> I'm the person in the car, like with the windows rolled up. So they're like, damn, she, I know she knows how to sing, but when you roll the window down, it's like terrible. Ooh. That's, <laughs> I'm that person. But, but you, you know, jamming though. I'm, Would you jam? Lord, Lord can carry too. She, she's trying to humble nah, herself. She, she can do a little. I know, like a slight, there's a slight <laughs> jaw, like something real, real light. Like, but when I start going up in like higher octaves and uh-huh. stuff, it goes really wrong. But <laughs> at least I try. Yeah, at least yeah. I really try. Yeah. So, Mom got you in the plays and music, but when did it like really like rock it off? You're like, okay, I don't want to do. Yeah. yeah. I would say when I got into college and then I just got to like, I went to Temple. So hey, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, you know what you're going to tell me get for real. Here we go. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, some way. Yes. Oh, Are you in Temple? Temple yeah, Grand? us too, actually. We're, See you? Yeah, yeah, TVU. Go out. All day. Yeah, so. Um, I Lauren always feels left out. Let me yeah, shoot no. to Howard. You know, we get oh, we got yeah. Howard's lit, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. went to Howard. We yeah. get we, My little cousin goes to Howard, way. actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. It's her first homecoming. She's acting grown. I'm like, oh, my God. We'll take it. Yeah. We'll take it. It's fine. Hey, we'll like it. the cousin. You know what I mean? We'll take All right. it. We'll take it. Shout out to Temple. Oh, that's so funny. So college. Yes. Okay. Um, I just went to Temple, and it was like Diversity University, as, mm-hmm. as we say. Mm-hmm. Right? So I just seen a lot of people just kind of doing their things. And I they always used to have this rap cipher on Fridays at the Bell Tower. Mm-hmm. And I just got to see people like uh, Mike Stu and um, Asher Roth. Mm-hmm. And, um, w- when were you at Temple? Um, to, uh, 2013. That okay. was my first year. Okay, okay. And then I graduated 2019. No, I'm lying, friends. <laughs> I went to school 2009 and graduated 2013. Okay. okay. I had just finished wow. 2009. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. they used to do that. And I just seen a lot of my friends just like doing their thing, like building their Instagram. Right. Like, 
um, when Instagram first started, doing their Facebooks, doing their Facebook freestyles, and kind of like watching the MySpace era and seeing the Nicki Minaj's and the Drake's. And I just saw a lot of people doing music around me. And I just was like, well, that's, this is something right. that I also want to do. Right. And it's something that I've been like sneaking and doing in my dorm, like when no <laughs> one's looking and, you know, inviting one or two of my friends to listen to my tracks. What do you, you think? Know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, I, 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 I think I don't know how it is now, but definitely when mm -hmm. I was there, when when Hector was there, when you were there, mm -hmm. it was a good era because I know when I got on campus, I felt like I was like way behind because oh. everybody was hustling. Like mm -hmm. they had like companies, their own companies. I'm like, why are you in school? You figured you got it. Like, right. like what are you, why are you still here? <laughs> like, you have your own company. Like people buying teachers. Like it's wild. Like Facts. so. Like it was definitely. Uh, I always say it's like hustle you because like everybody just had that side hustle and just doing stuff. That's dope. Mm -hmm. That's dope. Yeah. So did you do a lot of perform? Did you finally do any performances at school? Like so mm -hmm. everybody's like, okay, Noel is an artist. Yes. Um, I actually had an open mic that I did with my student organization called Babylon, mm -hmm. and the student organization was called Babel. Mm -hmm. Um, it was actually started by Malcolm Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. um, okay, know Malcolm Kenyatta. Yeah. I went to school with Malcolm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, he started that that amazing student organization. I remember and, that organization. Right. Yeah, yeah. And we just started this live event and we would just do this live event and I would host it and then sometimes I would do my raps or sometimes I would sing or, okay. you know, and people would, their, their, the reception would be just like great. Wow. Like people would just be like, yo, we feeling you. You should that. Do I remember this. going to those shows. That's really? Why. Yeah. Now that you said, I'm like, Whoa. what? I so think they you probably a, saw they, me then. They used to do a couple in the <laughs> in the underground. I think. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. where they were. We used to pack out the underground. Yeah. They used to have to call the fire marshal. People I would love be trying to break in that joint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, the underground was like literally un, like it was like a we had a movie theater and okay. then like you went downstairs and it was underground. It was just like a, they had like a stage and like really. Okay. Yeah. It was really dope. A nice event space. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Fit like 200 some people. Right. Right, right. Yeah. So I did a little bit of research. Mm -hmm. So I know that your favorite artist is Prince. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> my mom's favorite artist is Prince, but he is my favorite artist by default because as a baby, that's all Can I could listen, listen to. to. Okay. All right. I'll give you that. But no, I love Prince. You though. love Prince. Okay, cool. I Prince. So I was like, all right, I got to ask her this question. Mm -hmm. if, you, if Prince was still here mm. and you were able to perform with him. What? <laughs> Do you know what song you would do? Of his? Or yours? Hmm. I would do the Picky Remix with Prince, for sure. Yeah. But he would just, like, freak it on some, like, guitar, like, alternative rock and roll type of vibe towards the end, like an outro. Like, I would just have him kill it. Like, just because Picky is, like, one of my, well, probably my most popular song, and I just feel like he would make it hot. Cool. Um, yeah, that'd be dope. Well, what about yeah. his what, his song? One of his, his songs? songs? Probably. He has I, so many. He has so many great <laughs> ones. And he has some other songs that he wrote for other people. That yeah, dope. he's a beast. I yeah. mean, he's just the guy that I was like modeled after, I feel, in a way, because mm. my mom just would play him all the time. But he has this song on the Purple Rain soundtrack called um, Take Me With You. Mm -hmm. And uh, y'all know that song. Mm -hmm. I would just replace the girl on that joint. Because <laughs> that's my song. That's that was, my uh, song. I think Lisa was on Lisa yeah. Was, yeah, was on the vocals. On exactly. That. So dope, take dope. that one. I was like, all right, I got to talk to her a little bit about Prince. How, yes, how do you I feel like him. he's like influenced your music? I mean, he just taught me that I could be anything I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Like, that I don't have to be in a box. Like, I don't have to pick one. I don't have to do this because be like this. And I don't, he was so many different things. He was, he was like, his own genre. Oh, yeah. man. Like, literally. Like, mm -hmm. he has so much music that he can call himself his own genre. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, he just taught me that as an artist, the, the possibilities are limitless. You can always reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. Right, you don't always have to be the same person, and then you can be cre as creative as possible, mm -hmm. e even on the cutting edge, even when people don't understand it. You know, um, it's just important that you express the fullness of yourself as an artist. That's what you're here to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, he just kind of inspired me to be multifaceted in my art and just to For be sure. like, you know, and be proud of that, That's you dope. know, and embrace that. So I mean, the common theme with all his different like looks over mm -hmm. the years, yeah, the music is always good. Yeah. And that's what it all comes down to. Always, right. Regardless <laughs> you can be dressed of, as a clown, right. but the music is dope. The music is dope. Right, yeah. yeah. The quality is definitely always there with him. And I think that's another thing that I learned from him is, like, mm -hmm. he's just a great artist. Like, the guy just knows what he's doing. He's thorough in his approach. His concepts are great. You know, um, I just, like, think it's so cool that that's who I was listening to as a kid. Sure. To be honest. Um, um, 
can agree with that. Yeah. We all can. So that's a good uh, place for us to put a pause real sure. quick. Mm-hmm. So when we come right back, we're going to have more questions uh, for you. Mm-hmm. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, the ugly mixtape, mm-hmm. the mixtape that you have out right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll just chop it up a little bit more, all right? Sure. All Dope. right, so it's your girl, Lauren Ray, right here, What a Ice Radio, my boy, Jada Gentleman, and Miss Noelle Scales. We will be right back. We are back, everybody. It's your girl, Lauren Ree, right here with Ice Radio. Jada Gentleman's in the building. Yay, yay. And we have Miss Noelle Skills here today. We're really excited about this interview. Yeah, for sure. So we're going to jump right back into some more questions. Let's get it. So 2017, you released Beautiful Bad. Yes. And now we're two years later, and we have the Ugly Mixtape. Yes, ma'am. So talk a little bit about your growth in those two years. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you feel like the projects differ in where you are right now? Um... Definitely the Ugly Mixtape was more raw. It's just raw. It's just me purging my emotions and not being so perfect and perfection and every note and cadence and this has to be Is that why you call it ugly? Yeah. Because it's just... It's just a mess. Mm -hmm. Like, these past (laughs) two years have just been a mess, you know? And we've made it look pretty, you know, with the pictures and the shows and the this and the that, but it's just so much ugliness that has gone on in the past two years. I love that. We we always talk about how, like, no one sees the the behind-the-scenes shit. Mm -hmm. Like, they Mm -hmm. only see the pretty uh, project as it is released. Mm -hmm. But no one knows the grind and how tears tears that it goes into it. So talk a little bit about that, like, Talk about a little bit of some of your obstacles that you had putting this new um, release out. Well, I'm, this is so weird, right? Um, I had no obstacles or struggles putting this project together. Oh, okay. In comparison to my first one, which okay. one was like an uphill battle. It just felt like I was like every day like fighting for the tape. This particular tape kind of just... It was almost like it was an angel that just said, here, here's this time in this space where you could just kind of take this time to express yourself, be yourself, and, like, purge all your emotions. Mm -hmm. It was really my personal life and things, like, as far as, like, I'm an artist and I I work, so then I'm trying to find that balance in between the two of those things. And then, you know, you have friends. I'm from Philadelphia, so you have friends that are, you know, getting hurt, you know, in the streets. And, you know, you you have so many different family issues, family passing away, and just so many things, personal things that were going on that were meant to kind of, like, deter me and stop me. But they didn't because I had, you know, my producer, Harry Wilson, who's like this incredible human being. Mm -hmm. One day I'm going to maybe do some sort of like video or something so we can just share him with the world, his personality, because he's just a dope of a person as a producer because he just allowed me to be myself. Mm -hmm. Nice. Even when I was coming in and just like, oh, I'm not having the day today. But I know I need to come in here and do my due diligence. And he just would let me be myself. So how important is that relationship between you and the other people that you have around you when it's time for you to um, get creative and do a project? Um, I feel like over the years, it's become like more important than just like me doing what I do itself mm-hmm. because I know the I know the effects of having a crappy team and I know the effects of having a great team. Mm-hmm. So it's like now that I have a great team, you know, and, and my manager's super dope. Mm. Shout out to Agent Eric. Um, and my producer's super cool, super helpful. I mean, I'll call them and just have a meltdown. And that's my thing. Like, I'll have many meltdowns. Like, <laughs> they'll, take, they'll take five minutes. Like, uh, okay, I'm going to call you back. <laughs> and then two hours later, Eric would be like, you cool? And it's like that type of thing. Just checking on me to make sure I'm good. And, yeah. and, and giving me that space to, like, be myself mm-hmm. and evolve. So... Um, it's just important, I, and I feel like every artist should have a solid team and, and understand that it takes time, mm-hmm. and you're not going to have the perfect group of people around you from the rip unless God blessed you with this incredible discernment that nobody else has. <laughs> right. You, you can't. You know, it takes time to, like, match up. So, yeah, I feel like it's super important, and, and it just makes all the difference. Yeah. Cool. So. So going into this particular process, we love asking our artists that come on, like, what is your process? Do you have, Mm -hmm. like, a, um, do you only want it to be you and your producer? Mm -hmm. Do you have to have candles lit? Mm -hmm. Like, what's your ambiance when you're in the studio creating? Um, Okay. Uh, Water. (laughs) 
pretzels. Lots of pretzels. Pretzels, pretzels. Like the little circle ones. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the circle ones. Yes. Yeah. Hot tea and, if possible, incense. But my producer, Harry, he uses the oil diffusers. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he'd be having yeah. that joint booming as soon yeah. as okay. you walk in. And, um, yeah, that's That's like the my, vibe. Yeah. Do you allow people in the process with you when you're creating? Um, I do, but I typically don't. And not because, like, I don't want people there. I just never have anybody there with me. It's just usually me and him. And maybe Eric will pull up. Or if I'm working with another artist, another artist will pull up. Or um, we have another producer we work with named Sean Boyd. Mm-hmm. He does a lot of, like, the keys. Okay. He'll pull up. So um, it's usually just the gang, like, the people that are, that are there to work, honestly. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. So we're about to jump into one of your singles off of ugly, the Ugly Mixtape, mm-hmm. which is Lady Killer, which yeah. is actually featuring another friend to the show. Absolutely. Chill Moody. Oh, He's word. Been That's here what's up. Several mm-hmm. times. Yeah. Um, so how did that collab come about? Wow. It, it was just like one of those divine moments in time. Again, um, how did that happen, Eric? <laughs> 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 I think we had a meeting. We had a meeting with... Nice Things Music. Mm-hmm. We went to Milk Boy, and he was just chilling. He was uh, just there. Yeah. Right place, right time. He was just, exactly. He was just chilling there, and then he's super cool. And um, I had worked with his producer, um, Ben Thomas, and actually it was his engineer, Ben Thomas. Producer, engineer. Mm. They all work together, but um, y'all know Ben Thomas, the goat of engineers. Mm. Um, we just, like, did that record, and we were sitting in the studio after we finished the record, and I'd be like, and he sent the record to his team, and he said, oh, Chill said he loved the record. I'm like, Chill who? What do you mean, Chill Moody? He's like, <laughs> he like, yeah, Chill Moody. I'm like, yo, how cool would it be to have him on the song? He was like, well, I'll let him know. I'll ask him. I'll ask him. And then we fast forward. We went to that meeting at Milk Boy, mm. and then he was just in the room. And I'm like, yo, you like the record? Yeah, like, you want to jump on real quick? Right. <laughs> um, he was like, yeah, I like it. Like, you want me to get on that joint? I'm like, do I want you to get on the <laughs> song? Like, Chill Moody is, like, to me, one of those, like, uh, just staples from the city, uh, and he's one of the people that you co you go to for inspiration, mm-hmm. like as an artist. Like when you reflect on, especially during this time in this era, like when you reflect on like different artists that was like kind of coming up in the past, like ten years, ten fifteen years. You always like go back to Chill Moody and like yeah. certain rappers like Chris and Neef, and mm-hmm. you know that's those are two completely different ends of the spectrum of rap. But mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying. Yeah, though. yeah. He they just hustle. yeah, and it's just you always heard his name, and he was just that guy. And so I was just like, yo, how cool would it be to have a song with Chill Moody? So um, he just was like, yeah, I'll do that. I'll, I'll jump on there, and he just bodied it. He killed it. So just like I knew he would. Real quick before we go to the song, uh-huh. Lady Killer. Really quick, <laughs> describe what it's about. Yep. Um, it's about. It's that girl. That's that. It's that girl. That's a devil in a dress. You know, she's like seen those before. Yeah, just <laughs> experience it much. <laughs> <laughs> that was in your pockets and your dress. Real. You know? Crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's about that spicy girl that gets whatever she wants, and mm-hmm. you know, she she don't care who she got to step on and hurt. She's just a sassy devil in a red dress type of type of girl. Sociopath. Got it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. For lack of a better term. Yes. Sorry, lady. (laughs) Okay. So with that said, we're going to jump to Lady Killer right now. It's Noelle Skills right here on Water Ice Radio. I'm sorry. And featuring Chill Moody. Yep. Uh, We'll be right. In the Fall Collective. In In the the Fall fall Collective. collective. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right, everybody. It's your girl, Lauren Ree, right here. Water Ice Radio, Lady Killer by Noelle Skills. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Lauren Ree live on Water yeah. Rice Radio. It's J.D. Jill. We got Lauren Ree, of course. Hey. And we have our guest, Noel Scales. Yeah. That was Lady Killer. Yes. Awesome, awesome. We got yes. another treat for you guys later on in the show, but we'll get back to the interview. Only because yeah. she asked. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I was going to like skip it, but yeah. she was like, and she's cool. do, do y'all do this? And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. Anything for you. Yeah. All right, but let's get back into the interview. Let's do it. So the intro mm-hmm. on... The Ugly Mixtape. Mm-hmm. Sounds like you're speaking to one of your family members. I'm not sure who I it am. is. Mm-hmm. Um, and you guys are talking about, like, uh, social media, Instagram. And yeah. Sounds like this is a, a wise person. Who is it? My grandma. Your grandma. Okay. Mm-hmm. I knew it was. It had to be an auntie yeah. or a grandma yeah. or somebody. And, mm-hmm. of course, she's like, you know that thing. And she's like, Instagram, <laughs> mama. Yeah, Instagram, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, it's so unnecessary, right? It was just like Mm -hmm. a humbling conversation that you were having. Mm -hmm. But you basically agree with her that, you know, Instagram is kind of like a place 
not necessarily that's a, a necessary avenue, right? Mm -hmm. But you're now in a business where everything is like driven social media, driven yeah, social Absolutely. media. Yeah. So my question really is like, how do you balance it all? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you give to your audience and what do you hold back? Hmm. Um, I definitely hold back like all my personal relationships. Like, I don't post my family that much. Mm -hmm. I don't post my significant others that much because it's nobody's business. Like who you're dating, who your family is, who your grandma is, who your uncles are. And granted, some people want to like sh show their love for their family. And I can appreciate that. Right. But to me, I just feel like it gives people a avenue of discussion that maybe they would not have had unless you shared it with right. them. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. So it's just kind of like those things I keep to myself. But then when I'm performing or I'm just being funny and being myself, mm. that's what I'll put out there. Yeah, it's funny you say that because mm -hmm. like, I feel like uh, when artists or celebrities in general, they have an issue, they'll they'll say, oh, the media is always construing things. But like, they wouldn't say anything if you didn't put it out or right, right. mention it or whatever. So it's kind of like, you know, it's up to you to not say certain things. Yeah. Or put up anything like that. Yeah, curate your experience right. for your followers. Do you sometimes feel pressured to give more than what you do? Yes. I think I'll be honest and say absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just, just in terms of, like, how it's set up and just how, like, you'll see, like, different results come from different things that like artists do you know and you kind of like f try to figure out oh am i going to go the sexy route mm -hmm. or am i going to keep it keep it artful and classy you mm -hmm. know and and if i don't go the sexy route does that mean less people are going to find mm -hmm. me appealing mm -hmm. or right. desirable as an artist or like how do you know but i just stay true to myself and true to myself is not over sexualized true to myself is you know sexy but not sexual not um, like over the top? Yeah, it's not degrading. It's not, you know, and, and I see it's for me, I think some of that stuff is cool, but it's just for the people that it's for. You right. Know? Like, mm -hmm. I Everybody just, has their own audience. Mm hmm Yeah. Because I, I know for me, I don't feel comfortable in certain certain outfits and certain certain doing certain things and twerking. And, like, you'll yeah. never see me do a twerk video. You might see me dance and have fun and, and act like I'm twerking, but I'll never just, like, blatantly create a video just of me twerking, you know? And knock on wood, maybe I will in the future. I don't know. <laughs> you know, but just in my mind and who I am and how I was raised, that's just not my go-to. I feel like you know? uh, we're in an era where, you know, if you think about 15, 20 years ago, especially for female artists, mm -hmm. they were pressured to do those things, yeah. wear those things. Now it's kind of you have the control over your own image or however mm -hmm. you want to be perceived or whatever so you kind of have that that it's different now yeah for, for artists so you could control what you want to do you don't have for to wear sure. that you could do that so, mm -hmm. so like knowing that how is that putting um how are you planning your your shows and your mm -hmm. events and stuff like that hmm i mean i think it's always about like heart and energy and just passion and like what you bring to the stage like you know, I feel like it's always about that. It's like, ne it's very rarely about like what girls have on and what they're wearing or how much they're showing or how much they're not showing because, you know, like, I don't know. I've seen, I, I went to Made in America this year and mm -hmm. I got a chance to see Cardi B perform for the first time. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you, she could have had on a, a brown potato sack with a, with a straw hat on, and that concert would have still been slamming. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. she just came out there with so much passion and execution and just power, and it was just, like, uh, overwhelming. And I just feel like it has little to do with what you have on. Mm -hmm. Like, you know... Um, I don't, there's just so many other examples, you know, that I could just use, but I think for me, it's just, you got to bring that energy. It has nothing to do with what you have on, mm. you know, like I, I could put on a bikini and go out on stage and just like do a very lackluster rap or sing very lacklusterly. And then, you know, it's just like, oh, you look good. And so now it's like, you're paying attention to the wrong thing. Mm. Like you, yeah. look, you I, worried about what I look like and what my body look like instead of like what I'm rapping like, or what I'm singing like, or how my how my performance is coming across, you know? Worry about the wrong shit. <laughs> right. You know, so it's just Yeah. I get it. It mm -hmm. happens that way. Mm -hmm. So again, doing my research 
it seems like you are a, around a lot of other strong female artists, right? Mm-hmm. Like I've seen you kicking it with Frenchie mm-hmm. before, <laughs> Jadea, who's also been on the She's show. On the, yeah, and you, on, on um, uh, Soul in the City. And Soul in the City last time, mm-hmm. the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, you have Suzanne Christine on the first album, wow. also in front of the show. Um, so what's that? I mean, I just feel like that is just so important right now. Because such a, yeah, that's a, such a great community. Yeah. yeah so like, how is that community uplifting for you and just being able to vibe with so many different creatives that are also black women right mm-hmm. now in Philadelphia? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, those particular people you named are like sisters to me. Like I tell them stuff that I, like I talk to them as okay. friends. So those three in particular, I've just been blessed. And Jude is kind of a new friend for me, but she just automatically became like my little sister because of our vibe. Like we just like fell together mm-hmm. and just ended up working, you know. So it's kind of hard. Um, Jude has this like aura around her that you have to be happy all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, when she walks in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to yeah. Jude. <laughs> yes, and she's soothing. She's like a soothing person. Mm-hmm. She makes you feel better. Like. She'd be like, well, you know, Noelle, like, you know, she talks really, like, <laughs> soft and proper. So, and then Frenchie's just, like, the, the like, go get a friend. She's like, yo, sis, nah, you can't do that. Ah. And then, like, Suzanne Christina's like, light the incense. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. She's, <laughs> she's Mother, Mother Earth. Earth. <laughs> Mother Earth. She's, she definitely yeah. is that. She'd just be floating in the room. Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you were here? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, it's like, they all have, like, their own cool superpower. I was going to say, y'all, like, a little super, like. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and Captain I just like, Planet, yeah. exactly Earth Captain Water. Marvel, yeah. Catwoman. <laughs> yeah, right? it's like I admire those things in each of them because they're all different, and we just all bring something different and just like different vibes. And I'd be like, mm, I like what you got on today, French, or Ooh, Jew, I like that accessory, or Okay, Suzanne, I like that perspective, <laughs> or you know, I mean, <laughs> I have so many dope conversations with Suzanne. It's like crazy, but. They just they just cool, man, yeah. and they just about their business. And, and I feel like whenever I meet a young lady that's just about her business and going super hard, it's just, like, always a connection, always. Like, I can always relate to that, so. That's dope. Yeah. Um, any, um, your cre- like, when you are ready to perform for your shows, right, mm-hmm. uh, do you have, like, a creative, like, process when you sit down with your team and say how you want the show to look? Like, do you want your audience to be mm. engaged? Mm. Different things of that nature? Your vision. Yeah. Uh, You know, guys, to be honest, um, yes and no. I'm still kind of like crafting the ultimate, uh, I guess you could say, stage, set, design, vibe. Mm -hmm. Um, But I definitely love live musicians. That's always my favorite thing. Yeah, It's just different. Nothing like it. It's just different. You can't get that vibe with just a track. So I try to just perform with musicians as often as possible, whether it's like a drummer or a bass player or a keys player mm-hmm. or whatever I can incorporate that's live, I try to just incorporate Do you that play any piece. instruments? Yes, I play piano. Nice. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Mm-hmm. Dope. So we have another song. Mm-hmm. And Jay, you want to introduce the next song? That we're going yeah, to? so we're going to go into the, uh, another song from the Ugly Mixtape, correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, Hobby. Yes. Let's talk about that. What's what's the story behind that? Whoo, Hobby. It's deep. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... It's about when, you know, and it's not one-sided. It's just like when you're in a relationship mm-hmm. and you're with somebody and they just treat you like a hobby. Like, mm. you know, when people treat, you know, you know what our hobbies are. What's your hobby? Uh, I would say podcasting, but it's kind of a career now. Yeah. So, right. uh, I don't know. I binge watch something on TV. I don't know. Right. I don't even know if I have a hobby anymore. Damn, what has life become? <laughs> Just work. (laughs) Yeah, somebody likes to go hiking or whatever. Right. Just like that thing you do on an occasion, you know? And and I feel like the song is just kind of fighting against that or just making a protest against I'm not a hobby, I'm a priority. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No woman wants to feel feel like that. Okay. (laughs) Make me number one. (laughs) Period. Yes. With that being said, let's go check out Hobby. It's your girl Larry right here. What Ice Radio, no Noel Scales. We got Jada Gentleman in the whole Wood Ice team here with us. We'll be right back. We're back. Lauren Ree Live, Jada Gentleman, Lauren Ree. We got Noel Scales. You just listened to hey, hey, Hobby. Hey, hey. And uh, we're going to get to know Noel a little bit. Cool. A little bit more on a personal level, maybe. Okay. All right. 
We're gonna play a game called Girl, Three the Fifth. Girl, why you do this? <laughs> One, two, three, four. Uh, fifth. I know. Now I'm, now I'm nervous. Uh, we're basically doing uh, nah. shoot your shot, but minus the liquor because we're yeah, not feeling it's the not, today. This is it's not the day. Yeah, not today. We still got some. I guess I got some stuff to do. To do. <laughs> But yeah, actually, we're gonna keep the same concept. We're gonna go two rounds each. Uh, mm-hmm. Each of us is gonna draw from the bowl. Mm-hmm. You can either answer the question truthfully or mm-hmm. just plead the fifth. Okay. And I might, you know, poke at it to see if I can get something out of it. <laughs> no, he will. It's not he might. <laughs> but you get to go well, first ha, ha, ha. since you are the guest. You are first, so dig in there, whichever one. And the colors don't mean anything. Read out the question. What is your biggest regret? Whoa, that's deep. I plead the fifth for her. Uh, uh, uh. Well, that was cool. I will, ask, I will ask, does it have to do anything with, like, relationship? Yeah. Just, okay. like. And and within that. See, see, see. Was, are these, do, do these produce songs? Absolutely. Songs on the new. Absolutely. Okay. So you're going to have to listen to the mixtape. It's on there. The you got to listen to the There's a method tape. behind the madness. I yeah. See it all comes back. Yeah. I see you. Yeah. It's going to be a plea to fifth kind of day, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer. I'm gonna all answer. right. Let's see. I think I'm going to commit myself to I went to down answer. to the bottom. <laughs> Start from the bottom. That's something we haven't opened yet. You wrote uh, these. I know. And I don't, I don't even know the answer to this question. Craziest thing you have done in public. Oh, I can already think of one. And I, I'm, you when know, you flipped so. over the table. On oh board. yeah, that's crazy as hell. Okay, you there can you tell go. That story. So <laughs> she's. <like, laughs> <laughs> All right, so I. <laughs> Nobody is. <laughs> you're not surprised by that at all. This is a past Lauren. Yes. So I was dating someone at the time, mm-hmm. and short story is, um, I found out that he got married. While they were dating. While we were dating. What? And I, when I confronted him about it, we were at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And of course, I've waited until we finished eating. But when I, (laughs) (laughs) because I was hungry, because I was still, I could be hangry. Um, and he kind of like lied about it, and then I kind of like blacked out. I flipped the table over. It was pretty much it. (laughs) You were totally justified in your reaction. I was. It'll be in the book. It's the full story is in the book. Everybody. She's writing a book. So, um, yeah. I'll read it. I'll buy it. I'll buy one for my mom and my grandma. <laughs> it sounds like a Tyler Perry movie. Yeah, like, it, yeah. It sounds hard. It sounds like it actually was way better acting though. <laughs> <laughs> it was real. Probably <laughs> because you weren't acting. <laughs> Probably but it was like, real. Thank you for reminding me yeah, of that. I was like, that was the first. Some thing. certain things I try to block out. Yeah. I've written that chapter, <laughs> so I've tried to block you it out. You said I was now. the old Lauren. Yeah. Right, I'll go. My turn. I'll try oh, to yeah. go somewhere. You're like, of course I <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. That was like super open, <laughs> unlike um, myself. This is Ask Jay Anything. I'm not okay, you got to put that back in. Because right. oh. Noah wants that one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, let's do this one. Uh, craziest online dating experience. Ooh, mm. you, pa- you have to have one. But I don't really do online dating. Really? Nah, nah, I haven't been on it in a while. I'm not really online. Oh dating is trash. It's so I bad. hate it. It's so bad. Hmm. Another chapter in the book. Go ahead. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, I don't have a crazy one. I, like I've had a dating experience where I met someone. They were in town. Um, she, she was from Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was in town for a wedding. And it was like one of the best we- uh, dates I've ever been on. Like she, you wow. went to the wedding? No, 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 no. It was like she really. Did. Oh, okay. And I she was, was on. She was on Tinder, or whatever, and like we was like. Tinder. Yeah, it was. This was dude, this like three, four years ago. I was going wow. more so for like it was like so you met someone crazy as shit. Nah. And they no? were like just calling me? you a million times. Just me with the crazy. Nah, nah. Just never me with the crazy you. online dating shit. Never. Okay, nah. wait for the book. But it was one uh, of the best dates I've ever been on. This is all a promo. This what? whole game is a promo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for my book. Go ahead. Yeah. What? I did, that was one of the best dates I've ever been on. But I, that was the last time I ever saw her. Really? Yeah, one she, and done. Yeah, she was, she lived in like like Canada, like like Saskatchewan, like. So I was like, mm, right, she get, found the Ash J anything. Oh wow! Ask anything. You can ask me anything. Okay. He's gonna answer too. So. <laughs> Um, How'd you find that? <laughs> I know. And it was another color one too. Yeah, it must be multiple. Okay. Yeah. Um, hmm. What do you feel is your biggest accomplishment to date? And what was the process in reaching that accomplishment? That's a really good question. Mm-hmm. Damn. Biggest hmm. accomplishment. Um 
I would have to say it's still ongoing, but mm-hmm. um, getting the courage to leave my old job job, mm-hmm. like benefits and stuff, mm-hmm. and really go in on Water Ice with Hector mm-hmm. and uh, my other company, um, Unique Entertainment, mm-hmm. and kind of just rolling the dice. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's an accomplishment because it's, it's very scary. Yeah. Um, and that was one of the, th- I had a pros and cons list and everything. Um, mm-hmm. And that was one of the things that it was like the biggest one was it's a risk. But mm-hmm big risk, big reward, you know? So it's still ongoing, but I felt like it was a big hurdle that I needed to get over mm-hmm. um, because I I knew for myself, I can't really work for someone. I'd rather mm, work yep. with people yeah. and just tell people what to do. <laughs> for yourself. You know what I'm saying? So for me, that was a big, big, big thing this year that I, big accomplishment for me, for myself. I would have to say that for sure. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be fair. Mm. You get to ask me anything. Nice. You get to ask Jay anything. You get to ask me something. Yeah. Okay. Different question, so. Though. <laughs> I know you're like multifaceted and you do a lot of different things now. Yeah, well, go ahead. <laughs> What's like your favorite endeavor that you've like business endeavor that you have going on? Like, what's your most like fun one where you're like, oh, I can't wait to do this one again? Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's easy. This um, oh, I think cool. podcasting, Lauren Re Live is my baby. Mm-hmm. So um, when I'm not doing it, it always feels like something is missing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is fun getting my hands into different things like on screen stuff mm-hmm. and events, events mm-hmm. and now writing. Dope. Um, but this right here is kind of like the center of it all. Mm-hmm. Oh, hosting, which Jay is like a, a, a Nazi with me about. But mm. only because I see the potential. Yeah. I only absolutely. push people that I see potential. And I'm, and I'm sure. always like the behind. I'm like, I'm behind the scenes. No one, you remember how radio, you never knew who your favorite radio you personality was. Like. You didn't know what they looked like. You saw them, you're like, oh, no. Wonder and so you went to Powerhouse right. and they were like hosting on this. That was like yes. what I thought this was going to be about when I first started this. And then what? it was like, yeah, like I thought like I was going to be able to hide. And mm. then Hector. You cameras? And then Hector was like, oh, we're going to record this. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we need you to do a green screen. Oh, and it's like, mm. it's blossomy. It's actually made me step out a lot more. Mm. But this is the thing that kind of centers me. This is like a very calming thing for me when I'm in here. I'm in my happy place Mm. when I'm interviewing other people and stuff like that. So that's cool. Definitely podcasting. Good question. Nice. Last round. Last round. Me. All right. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oop. This one right here. (sighs) I just have a feeling this is gonna be like crazy, crazy. I hope it is. (laughs) No, it's not actually. Sorry. You, you want to veto this one? Yes. Okay. We're not yeah. going to tell y'all what it was. All right. Yeah. He wants it to be something like. I want like a question. A good one. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Have you ever cheated on your boyfriend? Yeah. Uh, it's in your book. It's in the book. Woo, that's <laughs> great promo for the book. <laughs> Set to release 2020? Wow. Uh, 2020. Let's yeah. Do it. But uh, I mean, I think everyone cheated at least once, right? Yeah. No. Uh, no. Psych- <laughs> I'm a saint. What are you talking about? I'm a saint. I ain't did I, it. Psych- no. <laughs> Have I? Like, does high school count? Yes. What? No. No. <laughs> Adulthood, yes. But the answer to the question, yes, is in the book. We'll be there. I love it. Yes. Right. I'll take it. I'll take I it. I feel like I'm just Now I got to go home and write. <laughs> that was not on the plan tonight. Right, I'm going to write. All right, let's see what we got. You gonna answer or you gonna play the fifth? He's gonna play the fifth. <laughs> I just wanna see what Do it is. Do you prefer to give or receive? Hey! <laughs> Gifts? <laughs> Gifts? You, know, you can take how you want it. My presence is a present, <laughs> so you're welcome. Uh, give or receive. I love receiving gifts, so I'll just say I like to receive. Okay. Keep it there. All right. I'm going to give her. You want to do another round? You want to do another round? Yeah. All right. <laughs> she, she was like, yes. She was like, absolutely. Up this is bit. so funny. <laughs> Have you ever been in love? Oh, yeah. I feel like we got to beat that one. We got to beat that one. We know we that from the Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Y'all are, spicy, I listen we got to color I listen, I listen to the mixtape. Yeah, she is. Here we go. Uh-oh. Have you ever had a... Is that what that says? Threesome? Is that what that says? Yeah. No. <laughs> Have you ever gotten close? <laughs> oh. What kind of question is that? There's, there's no rule. You want to do another round. There's no, no, there's no follow-up question rule, so I leave the fifth for that follow-up question. But the answer That's all your I needed. It's not no. in the book. Right. <laughs> that was all I needed. <laughs> that's more, you more than... Watch. 
I took more from that than what you gave. So you gotta watch cool. out for him. I'm trying to tell you. Yo, he sneaks up in there like <laughs> you, you don't even catch him. I mean, the people want to know. I mean, they're curious. Sometimes I mean, it happens. Like, we what all, you we, into? We, we <laughs> in them situations. We've all been there. You, know what I mean? <laughs> you think about it. It's a know? hard no for me. <laughs> <laughs> This is hilarious because this question is a question that I answered on the singles rant. Shameless plug. Go watch it right now. All right. Uh, um, have you ever dated someone for free meals? Yes, you have. Yes. It's on It's on the episode. <laughs> go watch that. Like every girl has done that at least once. And if they have <laughs> not doing that, that in their lives. Let's be real. At least go ten watch times. the episode of the singles rant. Yes. My answer is there. But All yeah. right. So my question is. Was it because when you got to the day you wasn't like he was ugly or you wasn't feeling? Oh, it? I was never feeling him. Oh, but he just, um he kept uh, offering. No, but yeah, I mean it was one of those things where like he kept pushing, 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 mm-hmm. but he also was like a foodie. Like he like mm-hmm. liked to go to nice places. So you trying, and okay. So I knew, and then when he said where yes. we were gonna go, I was like. <laughs> Yeah. Wait a minute, I can move some things around. Yeah, whatever. Let me check my Y'all calendar. <laughs> Please. It is some girl out there that is 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 giving out free meals, possibly, just not me. But go ahead. Ah. Right. Mm. Uh, find them. Yes, right, take the me to Ruth one. Chris. Okay. Child with Ocean Prime. Most embarrassing <laughs> sex moment. I am uh, pleading the fifth. On what? That one. You finally go. <laughs> you got I some nerve. The fifth. You, you got some nerve. I'm not answering that one. No right. way. But what's it like? <laughs> Because you was it no, or it she wasn't, was it there? It wasn't because of me. It was because of her. Yeah, and I don't. And I don't want to do that to people. I can't do that. <laughs> but we not saying names. Uh, nah, nah, I, I ain't doing that. Know. Nope. He like no that's way. Gotta, that's another the conversation with more <laughs> drinks. If we had drinks, I probably would have done it. But nah. wait a minute. Well, nah. did, did you try again afterwards, or was like, or like it was like? Luckily, <laughs> well, well, luckily, luckily, this was on the cruise ship, so like I, I like Honestly. I was gone. Bush girl. No. Oh. No, that okay. was something different. Okay. No, no, no. That was another episode. Cruises that was just, are dope. That was just an ac- occupational hazard. <laughs> <laughs> you got to really get around. The other one was embarrassing. Was but yes, I used to work on a cruiser for a couple of years back oh, in the day. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, now, yes. that's something he should probably write a book about. Yeah. I want to have a series, actually. About the experience. I want to do a TV series about that. Below about what that. goes on. It's a show on right now yeah. called Below That. Nah, like a written script. Oh, a written script. A script, yeah. Dope. Like a series. But like of what actually goes on. And the crew and staff behind the doors, like crazy people. When you you wouldn't think it's real, like it's stupid. Really, yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> I'm laughing because I want to know. <laughs> like I ain't me doing too. That. I ain't doing that. Was she a passenger? No, no. she worked there. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. So you had to see her again for like a, like two weeks. Oh, yeah. she for like was two weeks. Sick. You, you see everybody every. <laughs> You see everybody for like twenty four hours a day, like because you live on the ship, you work. You know what I mean? Ooh, so two weeks was like a month. She was sick. Yeah, but I, I never, I never, I, I don't think, man. I, Did you I, expose her to anybody? To my no. best friend, my on, my roommate. My on roommate. the ship? Yeah, 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 my boy Alan. That was my homie. Oh, so. that's, yeah. all that has to be terrible. That's yeah. a bad joint. That's a, that is a yeah. bad joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different if she was like, she probably wanted to jump off the damn fucking She bed. might have. <laughs> oh, she did something terrible. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, well, there you have it. That is please. That was spicy. That, that was super that was fun. spicy. spicy. That yeah. was you guys, spicy. I turned up. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have the, Can you imagine with the liquor? We didn't have the, the <laughs> kilo yeah, so today. Normally, oh gosh, if you I don't want to, if you don't want to answer, you have to take a shot. Oh, wow. So it kind of takes you there. And yeah. then you end up answering anyway. Anyway. There's another, yeah. there's another level to it. Vicious circle. We actually, <laughs> we, we did it with, uh, who did we, we did it with, uh, was it Mark and uh, Be Easy? Oh, Mark and And they were like, we should have drank easy. before the Oh, interview. my God. That's like my bro. Yeah. That's my little bro. I know oh. he's in here cutting up. Yeah. 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 We They were right, though. They were like, we should have drank before we played the game. And then we would have got y'all to answer some of these questions. I'm like, nah, y'all wouldn't get him caught out there like <laughs> might that. might have to do that for next year. Next year. Next year. 2020 will come a little bit more prepared Word. all right so we're going to take a quick break this was really fun actually yeah. so when we come back we all have to say goodbye unfortunately. unfortunately right my least favorite part of the show but um a little bit more with no ill scales when we come back on the show is lauren re live don't go anywhere we are back, everybody. It's your girl, Lauren Ree, right here. What a Ice Radio on the Lauren Ree Live show with Miss Noelle Skills. What's going on? And this is my least favorite part of the show. Yeah, we had fun today. We did. Yeah. It was a great show to come back, yeah, right? absolutely. Mm-hmm. This is the Lauren Ree Live wrap-up, so this is the time where we get to talk about what's next. 
What's so going we on? We got these shows coming up. Yes. Tell people what's going on. Um, we're doing SOBs for the first time, November yes. 18th. Yeah. What's the date? November 18th. November 18th. That's yes. huge. Yes. yes. And I'm doing a free ticket giveaway. On my Instagram right now. It's something okay. small. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm doing SOBs November 18th. Um, I have Pop Smash Radio on what day? The 5th of November. Okay. Um, They're funny. I like them. Mm. Yeah. They're, you're going to have fun on that show. I've never like experienced it, and I, and I kind of like haven't really kind of looked at everything they've done, but I heard it was pretty cool. Oh. Um, and I after SOBs... Um, we're probably going to be dropping some visuals. Cool. Okay. Um, and yeah, we just going to keep doing more and more shows, but the uh, coming up next right now that I want everybody to tune into is November 18th. Cause I want, I want some Philly people coming out to New York. Yeah. I, I want to see y'all there. And even if I have to get y'all tickets. SOBs is like a legendary yes. like, spot. You like, have to do it. Yeah. Yes. That's amazing. Are you hell? Is it just you? Um, Suzanne Christine oh. is also on that, John. Okay. And you know, uh, Philly heavy, heavy. You know, and Suzanne just moved to New York. Yeah, right. she's in New York now. In Brooklyn. So um, I just think it's just a cool, cool, cool full circle moment. It's so crazy because I knew Suzanne when she was a kid. We went to the same summer camp oh, wow. together. That's wild. So, yeah, super cool. And I and I used to, like, admire her. I used to be like, wow, that girl could sing. And it's just <laughs> crazy, like, seeing her now. It's just like, wow. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be. Definitely full circle moment. For sure. So, uh, where can they find you on uh, social media yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, also where can they get the Ticket. ugly playlist oh, and the tickets? Yes, yes, all of that. You got a lot all to plug. <laughs> yes, um, it's at my Instagram page, um, Facebook and Twitter, Noel Scales. Mm -hmm. That's N O E L S C A L E S. And yeah, um, that's where you can find me and my tickets and my mixtape, my music, and all that. Perfect. Oh, yeah. All right, everybody. So there you have it. Miss Noelle Scales was here in the building today. Yes, ma'am. Um, what Ice Radio, what we got coming up. Oh, more with the Uncensored Podcast. They have their second live show coming up November. Somebody help me out. 20th. 20th. Yes. At Pub, Pub Web. Web Temple. <coughs> Yay. Let's yep. get it. So you can get the tickets on our page, mm -hmm. on the Water Ice Radio page. Uh, make sure you guys check them out. They are uncensored. This is a they wild. <laughs> wild. It's the, it, the easiest way to really describe That's it. That's all you need That's to know. That's all you can say, but they're great. Um, and then, you know, we have plenty more to come. We have a lot of, hopefully, some new more shows coming on in 2020. We're going to run out the year. A couple more shows. Get ready yeah. for next year. Gotta... Where did 2019 go? I know. That end of the year show is going to be crazy. So fast. It's going to be nuts. Because we're going to do it uncensored, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot I signed up for that. Yeah. Why? So, Lauren Re Live and Uncensored are doing an end-of-the-year show. Wow. And me and Jay are honestly scared. <laughs> you know what, though? I think if I had the tequila, I'm, it's going to be an You'll open be book. Gucci. I'm going to be good. Okay, so they have this wine that they have that mm -hmm. um, their, their sponsor is, uh, makes wine. And <laughs> it's not like your normal wine. Like, it's a creeper. Like, all of a sudden, you're like, who? I said that kind of like thing? Like, if Four Loco uh, was a wine. There you go. Where got do it. you get that from? So I don't <laughs> gotta, gotta watch show. Yeah. So um yeah, that's coming up at before the end of the year. Yeah. Nice. I'm 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 actually really excited. No, I'm, I'm actually gonna be on their show. You are. Next, yeah. Next couple, week. Next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually. That's my warm up. That's my warm up. I'm actually scared. I was actually already on their show. Yeah. Um and it was cool. They yeah. were chill. Yeah. You'll be fine. Hey, I'm good. I don't know. Let's do it. Honey might, you know, throw a couple extra Jeez. questions at you. I am not ready. <laughs> you are I am not, not ready. You're not ready I'll for be ready. It. I'll be ready. I'll be good. All right, everybody. It's your girl, Lauren Ree, right here with Ice Radio. We are out and never, ever, ever forget, not all superheroes wear capes. Sometimes, Sometimes they, they wear, wear headphones. headphones. Peace.